And then during the actual shop drawing phase, um, the steel fabricator was the one who contracted the CLT. So they did a lot of coordination between the two. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. I recently put out a video on five different framing schemes for mass timber projects. And one of those schemes covered was a hybrid structural system where mass timber is combined with some other structural building material in order to achieve the design requirements for the given project. Now, at the very essence of a hybrid structural system is leveraging the different inherent capabilities and strengths of different structural systems. As mass timber has continued to grow in its use here in the US over the past decade or so, architects and engineers are really becoming finely tuned to the different nuances of mass timber design as well as other structural building material design for things like optimization, material use and efficiency, and ultimately cost. Now, whether due to unique span and loading requirements, building code limitations, aesthetic requirements, and other aspects, many projects in the US have started to use this combination hybrid structural system of mass timber with structural steel. Many times this results in mass timber floor and roof panels that bear on structural steel beams and in some cases structural steel columns. Now one such project to use this type of a mass timber steel hybrid approach was the Penn State College of Engineering West 2 building, a project that is still under construction but nearing completion. It's a four-story project and I recently had a chance to discuss the structural design of this project with Amy Barabbas. Amy is a principal with Hope Fuhrer Associates and we talked about the nuances of structural design of this project, connections between the mass timber and steel elements, as well as really the coordination detailing that's necessary when working with two significant and different structural systems within the same project. So I'll get right out of the way. Let's go over to the conversation that I had with Amy Barabbas of Hope Fuhrer Associates on the topic of mass timber and structural steel hybrid design. All right, Amy, well, thanks for joining me today. First question for you on this hybrid structural steel and mass timber project is wondering if you could describe the connection design, the connection detail that you used where the CLT floor and roof panels bear on top of the structural steel beams. Sure. Um, we use what I think would be the typical connection between the CLT and the steel. We went from the underside of the steel beam up through the beam flange and into the CLT with combi screws that were spaced, I think about 24 inches on center. Um, we did want it to be a tight fit between the CLT and the screw. So we didn't expect any kind of elongated hole in the steel beam or in the CLT. Got it, okay. And you, you referred to there an elongated hole, which was part of uh, another question to bring up was differential material movements. Did you anticipate any, experience any, between the, the mass timber and the steel, whether due to moisture or temperature fluctuations? No, we didn't experience any of that. If anything, the only thing that um, came up with uh, at, in construction, the contractor did ask if they could expand the hole. They thought it would be easier to install after the fact. And I think they also were having a hard time because we had asked them to pre-drill the holes in the steel flanges prior but some of the beams got out onto the site without that being done. So in construction, they wanted to drill some of those holes and they wanted the larger size because they thought it'd be easier to drill something to do with the drill that they had. But we had had to ask them to use the smaller ones for the tight fit. Got it. Okay. And that tight fit was for purposes of load transfer, diaphragm yes. load transfer. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next question for you is, we know with a mass timber project, we often talk about kind of working very early on uh, with a fabricator, with a manufacturer, and kind of working with them to optimize the design for their materials. In this, you would have been working with several manufacturers, right? Your mass timber manufacturer, your structural steel manufacturer. So I was wondering if you could talk through the that process, working with several different manufacturers, you know, the coordination side of pre-fabrication models, and then also shop drawings, and kind of how was that all integrated together? Sure. Well, during the design process, we actually met with the three companies and everything we did was virtual, um, but we met with them, the three companies we thought would be bidding on the project CLT wise. So we kind of got an idea of what they thought we needed to put into the drawings. 
And we kept all that in consideration. And then during the actual shop drawing phase, um, the steel fabricator was the one who contracted the CLT. So they did a lot of coordination between the two. That's pretty much what happened there. Got it. Okay. And then once you got into shop drawing phases, you were considering several sets of shop drawings and was there some coordination to kind of check back and forth to make sure everything was coordinated or was that more like you mentioned on the, the contract or to do that? No, that was on us. And I think, I mean, we did get, maybe I misimplied it, but we did get two sets of shop drawings. We got the steel shop drawings and we also got the CLT shop drawings. So um, what we had done during the design phase is we had come up with some CLT layout plans and that helped a lot with what we expected to see with the CLT shop drawings. So we did look at them. Um, and then we also looked at the steel drawings separately. Um, I feel like any edge of slab openings, uh, any openings for ducts, that was all kind of coordinated with the, the CLT plans. Right, right, okay, got it. Uh, last question for you, Amy, is uh, fire design. Curious, did this project require a fire resistance rating? How did you approach that with these multiple materials, structural materials? Sure. So the majority of the project did not require a fire rating. The only places that did would be the shafts and, of course, the stairwells. So on our CLT layout plans, we had designated um, two areas where the stairs would land on the CLT. And we had mm -hmm. called out on the plans for the CLT panel to be yeah. separate. So normally yeah. the CLT panels come and they're like 60 mm -hmm. feet long. We wanted two smaller CLT panels in that area that would just sit on the beams that framed out the stair. That way they could be separated. And then the beams framing out the stair were fireproofed. So that's how we kind of took care of that. So if something happened to the long span beams, it wouldn't take out the panel at the stair to be separate. Got it. So it's just kind of isolating in those areas of the shafts. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Awesome. Well, Amy, this has been uh, really informative. I think, you know, seeing more and more hybrid mass timber and steel projects come, come down the line and uh, your insights on how you approached a lot of these common design questions has been helpful today. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Amy. I do think that we are going to continue to see this trend of mass timber in hybrid structural systems and structural steel is certainly a possibility and has been done on several projects. So hopefully this information shared is helpful to you if you look at doing your own mass timber hybrid structural project. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you for making it to the end. And until next time, we'll see you later.